Hi guys, how are you? In this video, I'm going to be talking about server-side rendering using Angular. This is also called SSR. Uh, what you build using the general simple Angular commands, uh, that's called client-side rendering, uh, CSR. So in this video, I will be showing you how you can integrate SSR in your application, whether you want to start it from the beginning or you have already built uh, Angular application and you want this thing to be integrated into that. So this is the documentation. It only gives us this command in order to integrate SSR in your Angular application. But if you are building an Angular application that includes the API calls for getting the data from server or that includes the front-end browser provided uh, objects like location, local storage, windows, session storage and a lot of objects. Uh, then you, this command won't work only. There are a lot of configuration that you would need to do in order to use uh, the API calls or even if you're using the scripts in your HTML files like for Google Maps, for Google Analytics and a lot more, then you might need to uh, have uh, a few things in your mind in order you to actually implement your components and services in your application okay so before moving forward uh, writing a code it actually facilitates crawlers uh, for search engine optimization and actually improves the performance on mobile devices that have uh, lower processing speed and more importantly it loads the first page of your application much quicker than uh, the actual angular application you won't see any difference if you have few two three components but you if you are building a large enterprise application then you would uh, generally see a lot of difference in terms of loading the first page of your application okay so let's come back so this is an empty angular project that i have just created with default uh, component and default files that it has created okay so now i need to implement uh, ssr in my application okay so this is the command it is actually providing for integrating ssr actually it uses the express engine to actually load the first bit of your application uh, through server side okay so i'm just going to copy it okay and i'm open up the terminal okay and I'm going to paste this command okay I'm not going to hit enter as of now okay but if I go to angular JSON you can see that we can have more than one project in angular application okay so what you need to do is you need to give it a project name for which you want to integrate SSR okay so I'm just going to copy this one this is the one name of uh, the project so I'm going to open up the terminal and I'm going to give it a flag hyphen hyphen client project and after that I'm going to paste the name of that project and I'm going to hit enter so it's going to install all the required dependencies of Express engine and it's going to figure out that this SSR has to be integrated within the project with name SSR project that I have just pasted. So it will take some time. You need to wait for it because it needs to create a lot of files as well as needs some modification in existing files of the Angular project. Okay, so there is an error. I need to be within the SSR project. Okay, I'm inside. Now I need to run the command again. All right, guys, so it has actually integrated Express Engine and uh, Angular Universal in our project. So let's move forward and see what are the files it has changed and what are the new files it has created. So first of all, I'm going to open up appmodule.ts. So this is the line it has created. This browser module was already existing and uh, it has actually uh, added this with server transition with the app ID over here. The file it has created is app server module dot ts so this is the module that will be loaded uh, at start uh, because it is actually importing the default app module over here this is similar to the modules but uh, it is created by that command we run and uh, now if i open up ts config server json okay so it has made some modification over here as well it has added the entry module now entry module is the not just the app module but it is the app server module now okay 
so if i open up server.ts this is the file it has created and in this particular file uh, it has actually created the default routes uh, using the express syntax and this is where the app will start and this is where the app will be loading from the server side the initial page of the application because it is importing app server module over here and it is importing the express engine over here and using express engine it is creating the default routes and from these routes it is actually uh, uh, loading this app server module okay and now if i open up the angular.json and it has this architect object and if we just scroll down there should be a server object has to be created by it so this is the server object and it has been updated and these are the output paths main and ts config have been added over here uh, to actually uh, configure this ssr for our angular application okay so that's pretty much it these are the file it has created and made few changes now uh, let me just open up the terminal and uh, i want to run this app using ssr so the last thing i want to show you is the package.json file if i open a package.json you can see that these are the four commands it has created itself so these will commands will be actually used to actually build the ssr project and run it on our browser okay so now i'm gonna first build it and i'm then then going to serve it okay so i'm just going to paste this the command over here npm run build colon ssr and npm run serve ssr and i'm gonna hit enter so it's going to uh, build the ssr project and it's going to serve it on our browser so let's wait for it all right so our node express server is running on local host 4000 so let me just open up it in a new tab so local host 4000 and it should load our project over here you might not see any difference in terms of performance or speed of loading because it contains only one component okay uh, i'm not going to finish it over here but there is a lot of things that we need to do when i tried to integrate ssr in my application because i was using a lot of api calls google maps google analytics and local storage session storage in my application uh, i had to make a lot of configurations over here make a lot of changes so now i'm going to let you guys know that what are the changes uh, you would need to make all right so first of all i will let you guys know if you are using local storage or session storage in your application then what are the things you would need to integrate first of all you need to install few things and uh, i'm going to open up the terminal and i'm going to install npm i for install and i'm going to install local storage polyfill okay it's going to install in the dev object of in our package.json file and uh, this will facilitate us to actually use the local storage in our application but uh, one thing once uh, so while it's installing the local storage polyfill i just want to explain you guys that the components which will start initially when we load our application uh, just like the app component or the initial uh, component that loads in the default route like local storage column 42000 this is the default route and for loading this route all the components that gets loaded or maybe the services that gets called or anything that gets called initially when we run our application without clicking any tab any button on our application only those components those services those directives pipes or anything needs to be uh, integrated in a way the way i'm doing right now like for local storage for session storage for calling an api for integrating google maps or for uh, google analytics uh, these things should be handled only in those component services or directives 
that you think will be uh, executed initially but once the page is loaded and when we go to another component by clicking on any button then uh, these uh, uh, local storage or API calls won't cause an error even if we run our application from server side okay because uh, the server side only runs the initial page of our application uh, with good performance so this is the one point I just wanted to explain okay so now it has installed uh, second thing I want to install over here is the session storage so is the session storage okay so this has to be installed so once it gets installed uh, I, I just want to open up the server.ts file over here and I just want to paste a few lines of code over here first of all I need to import local storage these things import local storage polyfill and session storage this is giving me an error because uh, there there might be uh, has it installed okay it is not found okay maybe the s is smaller here yeah. it is smaller for the storage so now it's going to install session storage so once you import these things you need to use it in your server.ts uh, for actually using it in your starting components okay so now I'm going to paste the lines of code in this file and uh, you can actually paste it above this export function okay all right so I've pasted it from here to here so what it actually doing is it actually facilitating Windows object document object object HTML element navigator local storage which is coming from the local storage import from above session storage uh, event and event prototype so actually if you uh, have written this these lines of code uh, make sure you pause the video and write it uh, in your uh, uh, file or server.ts and it won't cause any error if you are using these things in your initial loading component okay so just save it and uh, let's see if it it's getting installed and this error will go away initially okay all right so uh, the last thing I want to show you that whenever in your app component let's say app component if you are because this is the component that gets loaded initially okay this is I'm sure and anything any component that is loading uh, from the app component like any child component in any child module then that should be handled in this way as well so first of all what you need to do is uh, the API calls doesn't work from server side so you need to wait until the page loads up completely and when it loads up then those API calls should be made so how we can check if the server side initial component have been all loaded completely then we need to call the API and it might be from the constructor or from the ng on in it 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 won't be within any function that uh, gets triggered uh, after clicking any link or button okay hope you are getting the idea so what I need to import is I need to import few things over here I need to import platform ID that will help me to identify if the application is running from server side or the client side and is platform browser is actually uh, uh, used to in, in condition to actually identify the SSR or the CSR okay so now I need to create inject an object within the constructor so over here so let me create a constructor okay all right so within the constructor I'm going to paste this thing platform ID this platform ID has to be coming from here so let me uh, bring up uh, inject module from angular core okay so that has been done so now let's say that we are calling an API over here calling an API 
it might be directly within the component or with uh, it's calling a function of a service and that service is calling an api okay so uh, this lines of code needs to be within the condition that if the page is completely loaded and it the page has become a client side now then call this api or call a function that is calling that api okay so now i need to use if condition and i can write uh, this dot uh no uh, actually i need to use is platform browser from above import and within inside i can use this dot underscore uh, platform id uh, okay so it is actually let's copy it and paste it over here okay now so calling an api from a constructor or ng on a net okay uh, these are the only two things that will initially be called or any automatic triggering function that is calling an api inside so now uh, this api won't be called from uh, the server side if you don't write this condition then with it, it actually won't wait for page to be loaded on the browser it will actually straight away call the api it will cause an error that from server side you can't call an api it should be loaded from the client side so this condition works actually so if if you are using the local storage or session storage even then you can use this condition you don't actually need to uh, import these stuff these things okay everywhere wherever that is being uh, that you are calling an api or any local storage or anything that is a part of browser for the client side you can use this condition anywhere any component any service or any directive okay so these are the steps you would need to follow in order to avoid all kinds of errors that you might face while implementing the ssr in your project okay uh, uh so uh if you are building a big application you will definitely see the there is a speed uh, speed up of the initial load of your application on the browser or on the mobile devices okay so guys that's pretty much it uh, uh, that's that wasn't uh, a short video actually because i wanted to explain you all the errors how to resolve those errors while you are integrating or following the uh, these guidelines provided by angular documentation these are not uh, enough you can go through uh, actually all these details what does it do how does it load the application what is the express server what is the express engine and a lot of these things so that's pretty much it uh, and i'll be creating more videos on um, angular architecture using ngrx and these advanced concepts make sure you keep uh, stay tuned with my channel make sure to subscribe my channel for upcoming advanced videos and hit the like button comment below if you have any question